Welcome to Conversations. I have a special guest today, Harold Altman, internationally known master printmaker. And I'm going to start right there, Harold, and ask you exactly what we mean by printmaker. I, I, I can see all your credits, all your marvelous credits of being known all over the world, but what's a printmaker? A printmaker is an artist uh, who makes prints, uh, basically, and I'm a pure printmaker. I, I don't do anything else but make prints. Well, we li I think we live with prints, or think we live with prints. I mean, you see them on an everyday basis, but uh, your work is very different from that. How, how does it work? How does it... Uh... Well, there's a term that we use. We, we call it uh, an original print, because basically every image that's printed is, is, is a print. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the work I do uh, is either etching or lithography, and uh, uh, using various materials in which I create the plates for the image and uh, have them printed a, in, a, in a print shop. Isn't this um, unusual, though, in art? I mean, there are not, not many of you. Well, there are quite a few, really, now, Eleanor, because uh, there's been a great renaissance of uh, printmaking. Uh, I think, in a sense, the, the original print is a, a very democratic uh, kind of uh, uh, distribution of art. In, uh, when you uh, do a unique uh, work, only one individual has that work or one museum. However, uh, a beautiful print can be in, in several hundred different locations, uh, many different countries. And uh, I've never quite thought of it that way, that you say mm -hmm. that unique piece of art. Yes. Uh, it, it goes in an institution, it never comes out again. Well, basically, <laughs> you, you, go there to basically. See it, yeah. you see it in maybe in reproductive form in some book or magazine, but uh, con having contact with an original is, is uh, totally different than seeing a reproduction. What well, is? Living with an original piece of art is a very oh, yes. special, special part of the quality of life. Uh, how do you go about it? How do you do this printmaking? Uh, well, technically, lithography has gone through a number of stages. I'm, I'm primarily a lithographer now. Uh, it was, lithography was discovered almost 200 years ago by August Senfelder, probably accidentally. And uh, that, in that period, or a period of about 120 years, Nothing but limestone was used to create the image. Uh, a drawing was done on limestone with a greasy crayon. Uh, then a liquid was poured over the limestone, and uh, grease resists water, uh, water res resists grease, uh, and uh, in that liquid there was acid, which uh, affected those areas that were not drawn on with the greasy crayon, and then somehow or other through technical magic, uh, one was able to print that image by wetting the stone with water. Wherever the drawing had been resisted the water, and that was a dry area, and then rolling that wet stone with a greasy ink roller, and then putting a piece of paper on it, and under pressure, creating the image. Uh, that exists today, but different materials are used. Uh, I'm going to skip over the fact that they used to use zinc plates and then uh, draw on aluminum plates and speak of the method I use directly. Uh, here we have uh, a piece of mylar, which is a plastic. Mm -hmm. And on one side uh, there is a grain surface, and the other side just simply smooth. I work on mylar. Here is a mylar drawing that uh, uh, I do in pencil. Sometimes I use ink washes on my drawings. This particular drawing is just pure lead pencil. This is my key drawing. Um, this drawing, I take one of these drawings with me. Of course, they're very portable. And one of the wonderful things about working on Mylar is the uh, possibility of making corrections, of erasing, of taking out. Uh, uh, as in any creative work, uh, one just doesn't arrive at something instantaneously. It's a struggle. And uh, on every one of these drawings, I've had to struggle. And thanks to the Mylar, I was able to do it very easily. Is that a new advantage that you didn't use oh, yes. to have well, in lithography? Oh, uh, yes, very much so. This was an invented uh, for commercial use, but as Every uh, printing device in lithography was always invented for commercial use. Soon afterwards, the creative artist would, would take it to uh, hand and begin to use it uh, personally. This mylar sheet is taken to uh, the printer and is placed on a sensitized aluminum plate. 
basically it's almost like a negative drawn by hand by the artist. Okay. Um, light is passed through the, the image. It's placed in a vacuum table, so the image is sucked directly against the sensitized aluminum plate. Then this plate is developed after light is passed through it by technicians, and uh, eventually uh, this plate is printed, and that's the first stage of my lithograph. Well, uh, then you, the artist, stays right with that technician. Oh, absolutely. You I would stay, have to. I stay with a technician. Mm -hmm. There are corrections that have to be made on the plate. Uh, if the plate is not conducive to what I, the image I want, uh, I may have to strengthen my drawing, or I may have to open my drawing up. Let's say these trees are, are very dark, and um, I feel that they're too strong. I simply take a, a scratching tool and open that, that image up so uh, there in the, in the tree trunk. But let me just pass on to okay. this. I'll flip this down. And this is what occurs uh, when the, the image is finished. But between this first drawing I showed you, there are five additional drawings with five different colors, separate drawings, that go to create this image. Now, I'll go on to In order, I mean, bring, bring in each one of these colors that's Yes, I, in have this to do, I have to draw print. them separately and work from color to color, printing one color at a time. We'll see that subsequently in, okay. as we go here. Here, for example, is how I, I might begin my, my imagery. I do a rough sketch. Uh, this this uh, drawing is going to be of the San Francisco Bay Area, looking at uh, Angel Island in the distance. And from this rough sketch, I proceed to do my mylar drawing. And we get a first print of that here. Do you, do you <laughs> sketch from, do you actually go, I mean, were you in San Francisco when you were oh, sketching yes. this? But I, I I use my camera as a sketching tool, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I compose the picture as best as I can uh, to what I want, but uh, eventually uh, I have to make changes in, in the image. Uh, if, if I want this tree to bend this way and in the picture it's straight, I, I bend it. If, I, if there are no uh, people in my image, uh, I create them. Um, it's it's a, I think of the, uh, the photograph as a point of departure. And, um, well, I'll go on and, and, sp and speak about it. This is the first uh, print I get from the printer. And you notice this, these two crosses mm -hmm. over here. One is a registration mark for me, and one is a registration mark for the printer. Um, I use that registration mark. I take my next sheet of Mylar, place it over, the place it over this, this print, and uh, trace my registration marks, and then proceed to draw, draw my next color, in black and white always. Even though I know the color might be yellow or it might be red, I have to compensate uh, for the, the fact that it's going to be yellow uh, by thinking of what my black will do to create that yellow. The first thing I do uh, when printing the image is to use a simple flat plate and this, this here, which I don't know whether you can see it on the television camera, is, is a transparency. On that, the next image, on that I go, I go here the transparency was a light blue. This, this is going toward the, the finished print. This is one of my trial proofs of this particular Do you ever get any print. real surprises? It doesn't quite... Oh. Sure. Come because I, I was thinking, you, you're obviously a genius. Obviously, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to be able to to envision how this is going to yeah. come out when all the colors blend together and it comes out in a print form, but you must get a surprise once in a while. Well, oh yes, uh, it there's a lot of frustration too uh -huh. because it's a struggle. Uh, it just doesn't come easy. I mean, you, you, there are many changes that have to be made. Uh, for example, from this print to the edition print, this is the edition print, and you see it's much richer, just if we have a comparison of the two. Uh, I brought the reds out more, the last color. Uh, if you notice those three tr tree trunks mm -hmm. in the image on the left, which is the final print, and these three tree trunks, there's, the reds are much stronger there. It's a much richer image entirely. If we put them side by side, we could see that. And this is the final print here. But I didn't show you the, the progressive changes in that because I don't have them. So we'll go to a print in which you see the progressive okay, changes. Okay, good. Okay. Here's one. 
in uh, which uh, I began with these three figures. I'm going to run through this fairly quickly, though. I start with, uh, the oh, the lettering here is my printer, my French printer. I print in Paris. Um, and he is writing instructions for the people on the machine press, which is a huge machine, uh, not quite very modern. Uh, these machines were made at the turn of the century, and Toulouse-Lautrec uh, would do his great posters on these machines. Uh, hand uh, proofing is one thing, but when you, uh, you want real accuracy, you go to the machine press in, presses they have in Paris. Anyway, this is the, the blue drawing, dessin bleu. Uh -huh. I'm working it in two, two different veins, and this is the green drawing. Um, and one of these will ultimately be chosen for the final image. Then I begin drawing. This is a light reinforcement uh, plate of uh, <coughs> kind of charcoal uh, gray. It's really a black thin down. It's number three plate. Then I draw my yellow plate. But also, uh, when you see a little note like this, this indicates that um, <coughs> this is a lemon yellow here, or the French would say citron. And um, this is a warmer yellow here. Then I do my blue image, another, another drawing. At the same time, I'm printing uh, a, a couple of prints in this violet color. And you'll see why as we go further. And this is the final red color. And we put them all together, and we get frustration. And this is frustration for me, because this is terrible. Uh, the red image of the row of flowers <coughs> looks like a caterpillar, a pink caterpillar. Um, the rest of the colors are very weak. But I go on to strengthen the colors. I go on to take out, work on the plates, take out a lot of the red, and I arrive at this image. Notice the difference between, remember that caterpillar is now yes. gone? Yes. And uh, the distribution of, of the red flowers is, is much, much better, more integrated. And these colors are very rich now. And this is the blue plate that predominates if we look at this man's shirt. I don't know whether they're going to be able to see these in, on television, because here is the violet plate. And that's the one I chose to create the, the addition. And we call that a B-A-T, which is written down here. Uh, bon attiré, good to pull. Because when you would do a, a print, you would pull the paper off the press. And you would always call that pulling a print. And still, it's a term used in France. It's the same term used here in the States. And this is the final print, which is <coughs> fairly rich. It is. It's, it's, your work is just magnificent. I thoroughly enjoy what I've seen. I'll but run I, through a The couple. work that goes into this, I mean, I'm just the technical work as well as the, wow. the uh, artistic creation in itself. Um, I'm going to put these up this way. I okay. think we can see them without them plopping over. The reason I wanted to show you this series is that I only have one example of where uh, the work is is in progress that a, a, another plate is being applied to color. Here's the beginning here. We go to that light gray black color. Then we go to the yellow color. Now here we're going to, after the yellow color, we're going to see the yellow applied to the first three colors. And here it is. Here we have four colors. We have the transparent color, uh, a kind of uh, brown color, then a black color, and then the yellow color. But there's still blue and red yet to come. And here we have. Do you always use all colors? I use uh, just the primaries, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Here's the red. Here's the blue. And finally. Oh, this is the final final print. Yes. Now, uh, I wonder. If would, I would it be safe to say that really the unique artist has a lot less work? 
yes, I'll tell you. Because you're, of course. you're changing your yeah. For example, if uh, working on something like this uniquely, if something doesn't go, you simply scrape, if you're working on an oil paint, you scrape it off, scrape off that, say a branch here isn't right, and you have a new surface, you quickly, you paint it in if it's mm -hmm. not right. Basically, that's what uh, creation is. I, I always like to think of it in terms of uh, literary means, too. When, when you think of uh, Anatole France, for example, uh, his favorite um, uh, story about him is when he was writing to somebody and he said, excuse me for writing this long letter. I don't have time to write a short one. <laughs> and uh, right. uh, I want everything to work uh, for me in, in an image. Uh, I didn't put this uh, little fence post here uh, at this corner uh, just because it was there. I selected it and make this move the image, image over. Everything I do is, is a, a, a carefully choreographed, uh, architecturally correct piece of work. A tree branch is not just a tree branch, it's, it's a movement that takes the eye and introduces it to other elements in the composition. But well, that's the joy of living with a fine piece of art like that. Oh, yeah. There's always yeah. something new to discover or something, something new that you hadn't quite seen before, the way the light hits it, right. that, that you've built in for the, for the people to enjoy. I, I'll just show you one more uh, group. I'll skip this group because it, um, go to a horizontal group. Again, here's the first image I get back from my Mylar uh, drawing. And this is of the bridal path in Central Park. And we'll go through the various stages again. Um, and I choose two colors to, to uh, work with for the, f for the key drawing. We call this the key drawing. I begin it in a green and Oh, I should add that I do 10 trial proofs. These are trial proofs. Mm -hmm. I do five proofs in that little kind of blue thumbprint up there, and I do five proofs in this green color. Now, when you work with a printer, or the technician that is doing this, this technician is, works with many different artists? Yes, <clears throat> but I work with the same man for 15 years, so we're, we're practically engaged. Right. And uh, he, uh, he, knows, he knows me. I spend more time with him than I do with my family when I'm uh, working in, in living in Paris. And uh, uh, I worked at a shop uh, called Morlot, which is a great shop that printed uh, Picasso, Chagall, Miro. I, I met uh, some of these people there while they were alive. And uh, unfortunately, uh, um, the shop, uh, uh, there was a disagreement with the workers and the, in, the son who inherited uh, the shop. And the workers finally left. And they went to another shop. And almost all the artists who work with these men followed them. Mm -hmm. Because they, it was like a marriage. Uh, my printer and I are inseparable, I mean, in, in terms of uh, of working together. It's a collaborative thing. Um, he follows my, sometimes we disagree, and, uh, but he proffers advice and in, ter in technical terms. We had discussions of whether this color is just right or which is the best print to choose for the addition, um, as example for the addition. It, it's, it's, it's a, and then the person on the press, the press consists of a, uh, the, the machine press cons it consists of a conductor and two crewmen. And there, the relationship, too, is, is a very personal, very warm. I cry when I leave these guys um, in, in Paris. They're just, they're just wonderful, wonderful people. You know, and when you're using the word conductor, I almost think of a piece of music as how it all sense, comes yes, it, it's, yeah. it's a similar, a similar type of creation, isn't it? Uh, exactly. Basically, he's, con he's conducting this image to its fruition. And uh, there's a great deal of work that goes down. Uh, when you go down to this huge machine press, um, the image uh, differs somewhat from the hand press, which the trial proofs were done on. There's greater pressure, and there have to be more changes made. And I stay with it. And very often, uh, these are huge machines, and I have to get in the, uh, in the body of this press and do corrections on the plate. Just my legs are sticking out. I wish I, I had some photographs. <laughs> we need some photographs. Yeah, just just feet sticking out. <laughs> but, so how we go about it? 
let me, I'll just run through this. Here's the yellow. Oh, there's the yellow again. Kind of brilliant. And the blue. And then finally the red. And then we come to two proofs, which, which are, one of which is going to be chosen as a, the Bonatire, and this is the one I chose, I believe, as the Bonatire. There's the mm -hmm. BAT mm -hmm. there. And the final image is of the finished, finished print, which is even richer than the Bonatire, because the greater pressure, putting that ink down on the paper, um, and it, it's, um, you know, I, I've had to struggle with this and with every other image I've done. Nothing comes easy. And, uh, um, you know, there's pain and then there's pleasure. And uh, you have to have both of them. Now, how many prints like this would be run? In I run. Uh, I have run. I chose a magic number for me, uh, oh, many years ago, of 285, and that's. Uh, I have 285 numbered prints in my editions and 35 artist proofs, and um, that's that's it. And the fun thing is, of course, the thinking of these these images going to uh, uh, to. Tokyo to London to Paris to homes in Peru even and then Denver and, and Washington everywhere and uh, it's part of the part of the pleasure. The Carolyn and Edward Gallery carries your work here if I yes. said correctly yes. here in Denver. So it literally goes all over the world. It goes all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, that that would give you yeah. great feeling of satisfaction. Oh, it's funny. I, I know. I very often I'll have uh, people uh, say, you know, where I get letters and postcards from friends. And say, I found you, I was walking on the street in Munich and there was your work in the, uh, the window of this gallery or I was in, uh, in uh, oh, odd places, I mean, you know, everywhere. Though. And you're primarily landscape? Yes, I am. I, 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 but it landscape that uh, I've always put the human figure in, uh, I think of um, a landscape as a cell, but in the human cell, we have to have a nucleus to make the thing operate. And to me, these figures are, are part of the nucleus. Uh, just recently, I did two prints without figures. I, and maybe I'm changing my theory. You're right, you're making a radical departure <laughs> yeah, from, that's your, terrible, from yes. your usual way. We won't know it's Harold Altman. Yeah. <laughs> why, why France for your work? Uh, well, I, I, was a, I was there during the war, and then I saved three years of my GI Bill and went back there and uh, studied there, 49 to 52. And uh, I happened to, I began to do prints in the late 50s. And then uh, when I started teaching at Penn State, I had did a portfolio that Penn State University Press published of uh, the Four Seasons. And I always printed my own work. And I was going to France as a senior Fulbright research fellow. And I took the plates with me and decided to uh, see if the French could print. And to my, I used a man who printed for Picasso, Jacques Frelot. And it was marvelous. He just, he, I was a conductor, he was the orchestra. But he did, he performed exactly what I wanted him to. And that freed me. It, it's, to me, I think of the equivalent of a writer writing a book and having to go and set up the type and print it. You don't do that. You have mm -hmm. technicians and artisans who are well-trained. I discovered that, and I began working uh, on prints. And I would go every other year to France. And now, uh, these past uh, 15 years, I've been going on, on a, on a uh, yearly basis. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a wonderful home studio in, in Paris, in the center of Paris. It used to be Alexander Calder's uh, 1929 studio. And there are a lot of wonderful ghosts that walk around there. I bet there are. Yeah. <laughs> very comfortable ghosts yes. to be there. And you received a very special award from Paris, if I'm not Oh, they gave me the silver medal. Um, a real key to the city. Uh, key to the city, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makes you official Parisian? Um, I can pass for a Parisian for about a minute and a half. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that sounds great. This, I think, I was, really, I'm getting a very new appreciation for the print. I mean, I, I, and w once you start talking about exactly how it comes about, I think we are so inundated with images that when you see something like this, you can forget about those and, and concentrate on something that's this fine and work. 
And you're here for Denver for the parks people, is that yes. correct? And again, landscape work. Yes, well. Uh, Are you going to uh, do a Denver park? Uh, I'm some going to be parks? taken around uh, Saturday to, to see some of the things uh, in this area and hopefully um, something will develop from it. I can't promise that because sometimes it doesn't work out. It, no, it has, to, it has to bind with you, obviously. Uh, yeah, well, also the weather has something to do with it, too, because well, I, I, I need to, um, uh, we'll see what it's like out um, Saturday and, and tomorrow afternoon, maybe. Because our western landscape is so different. Yes. I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm an Easterner, so our western landscape is, has a richness, but it's not like this. Well, it, 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 you know, it, it, it also uh, uh, gives me something new to chew on. <clears throat> For example, when I, when I first went to Japan, I had no idea really of what I would see there. And, and the, my, my host uh, took me to every, uh, every spot I wanted to go to. And seeing the Japanese gardens was uh, extraordinary. And, and I began to do some pieces on Japan. Uh, and it's that way, uh, usually, uh, where, wherever I go, uh, I see something. People want me to see their parks. Uh, in, in France, for example, in Paris, uh, most people live in small apartments, except for the very wealthy. And um, the public gardens are, are a garden that is shared by everybody. Each garden has a specific uh, kind of clientele. Uh, students and young lovers, you'll find more of them at the uh, Jardin de Luxembourg, and uh, you find retired workers up in the, uh, laborers up in the Boutchermont, uh, and um, nannies and uh, their charges at Parc Monceau. Uh, but each area has their park, and they're very proud of their parks there. Um, park is shared by the whole city's population, as it is in many cities. I was a kid in um, New York, and uh, uh, living in the Bronx, and uh, uh, a park to me was a country. Uh, it was my country as a, as a child. Right. It's your urban uh, backyard. Right. A very important urban mm. backyard. Well, we're going to be looking forward to seeing more of your work, Harold, as we go along. I think it's wonderful, some of the pieces that we have. I, I, could, I could stay in the studio for quite a long time, you know, and just sort of uh, enjoy being surrounded by fine art and fine pieces. You make me blush. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I really, really appreciate it. And I think you've given us a new outlook on how this comes about, how the artist works in this particular art field. Um, I know we could talk for a lot longer. You were giving me all kinds of tales that I wish we could share with the general public, too, about all your work and, and what you've done. Mm -hmm. But our half hour is up, and this has been a very special conversation show. We sort of bill our show as being one for people who add to the quality of our lives, mm -hmm. and you certainly have done that for us. Well, thank you. Thank you, Harold, for being with us. Thanks. This is... I love you.